name of Almighty Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. As Muhammad peace be upon him narrated, if any man travels on a road in search of knowledge, Almighty Allah will cause him to travel on one of the roads of paradise. Hello everyone, this is Dr. Tarinsu. Thank you very much for watching my videos and your wonderful support to make the channel a grand success. We are a family, a partner. Please share and subscribe our channel if you haven't done so far. We as a team can work together to convert our challenges into opportunities and opportunities into success stories. These success stories can be monetized into value addition in the world by, by large. Thank you very much for your precious time. Today I am going to discuss Fluid Cataractic Cracking Lecture Number 5. Before my lecture, I used to read a Quranic verse. Kala Rabbi Shrahali Sadri Wajya Sarli Amri Wahlalu Ukhdatum Millisari Yaf Kau Kauli Allahumma Rabbi Zikri Ilma O my Lord, open my chest and ease my task for me and the loose an art from my tongue that they may understand my saying. Allahumma Rabbi Zikri Ilma O Allah, advance me in my knowledge and true understanding. Okay, Fluid Cataractic Crack Abscess Unit Lecture number 5 Abscess Unit A Process of Flow Description Okay, Key Takeaway Points from Lecture number 5 Abscess Introduction Abscess Reactor and Abscess Regenerator Okay, Introduction Fluid Cataractic cracking abscess unit is split up into a three main sections. First, reactor originator section. Second, a main column section or distillation column. And number three, gas concentration section. Okay. Reactor origination section. In this section, the chemical reaction for the fluid catalytic cracking of process takes place. In the reactor, the raw oil is cracked into a lighter hydrocarbon initiated by the abscessic catalyst. A byproduct of the cracking reaction is the formation of a coke, which is deposited on the fluidized catalyst. The coke leads to a deactivation of the catalyst. The catalyst is reactivated continuously in the regenerator. There, the coke is burned off. This leads to production of flue gas and heating of the catalyst. The hot reactivated catalyst is recycled to the reactor. The sensible heat of the catalyst initiates the endothermic cracking reaction. The flue gas from the regenerator is cooled in the flue gas steam regenerator. The steam produced is separated together with the steam coming from the catalyst cooler and the main column bottom steam generators in the superheating section of the flue gas steam generator. Okay. okay, main column or main distillation column. This section is the first step in the product separation sequence. The hydrocarbons with parts from the reactors are fractionated in the main column. The hydrocarbon mixture is spilled up into a bottom steams, heavy cycle oil, light cycle oil, and heavy naphtha and the main column overhead. These steams are used for internal heat exchange or a product steams. The light cycle oil or LCO product and heavy naphtha product are stabilized in steeper columns. Another part of column section is raw or charge system for feed preparation. Okay, next is the gas concentration section. Okay, gas concentration section. This section approaches the overhead product from the main column. It can be considered as a second step in the product stream suppression. The received mixture of the light hydrocarbon is fractionated into intermediate naphtha, light naphtha, liquefied of petroleum gas that is LPG, and non condensable off gas. The gained fractionations are used for internal heat exchange and are product steam after adjustment of vapor pressure in several fractionations and steeper columns. 
Hydrogen sulfide or H plus is concentrated in the non condensable of gas and eliminated in an absorber column. Okay, raw oil charge system. The raw oil a charge system provides a fit to the unit. It removes the heat up from the fractionations, sections and heats the charge to the desired reactor riser in the temperature. So that could be unit XYZ connected with the crude dissipation storage and condensate etc. The feed steams from a crude distillation and crude distillation enters under a flow control. The flow control obtains its set a point from the frictionators a level controller in as unit design. Additionally, a flow from the condensate distillation generator can be added to the hot feed. The combined feed flows to the raw oil field surge drum. The drum acts as a surge control to damper a process of flow variation from the upstream unit. The drum pressure floats on the main column pressure or through line connected below the trail 21, 23. 23 that depend on how the column is designed. Drum level is maintained by level controller which signals the flow controller of the raw oil steam from storage. In case that feed mainly from the storage enters the unit, it passes a two upper heaters. The feed is heated in exchange to flow controller circulating heavy dafter. The feed is Further heated in exchange to high pressure steam under temperature control, which link with the acid cascade loop, exchanges and the cool can be blocked and a bypass in the unit feed mainly with the hot raw oil from the distillation column. From the raw oil a feed a surge drum, the raw oil is pumped on flow controller by raw oil pump. It is a finely heated up by exchanges to high pressure steam under temperature control to reach the temperature up to 200 degree of four Celsius before entering the reactor rise. Oh, okay, FCC reactor. The flow of catalyst between the reactions and regeneration section is the heart of the FCC process. This catalyst flow is quite large and can be in the range of 20 to 25 tons of catalyst circulating each minute depend on the design of the, the column or the, the capacity of the column or capacity of the reactor. Control of this flow is critical to a good unit operation. Hot regenerated catalyst exit the regenerator at the temperature of around 700 or 20 degrees Celsius or 13 to 20 degrees F. This catalyst of flow down through the regenerated catalyst a standpoint to the wide section of the riser. Okay, where it contacts with the lift gas and steam. The catalyst flow is regulated up by the regenerated catalyst a slide wall. Reactor temperature is controlled by the amount of catalyst required to rise the gas and the oil steam to 529 degrees Celsius operating temperatures. The reactor's low signal selector that is called the LSS to regulate the amount of catalyst entering the reactor arises. A safety feature incorporated into all the catalyst or slide walls is the pressure differential override. If the pressure differential across the slide wall drops low or becomes a negative indicating low. Okay, the pressure differential controller PDIC sends a signal to the LSS to close the valve. This prevents oil from entering the regeneration section which could result in a very high temperature and possibly damaging equipment. Lean sponge gas from the gas concentration unit is used as a lift gas in the riser. Lift gas flow is controlled at about a 
two weight percent of the fresh feed. The lift gas transport regenerated a catalyst up to the riser to feed injection spot. Steam is also injected at the bottom of the risers on flow control at approximately 2 weight percent of the feed. Lift gas and steams are controlled to maintain minimum velocity of 3 meter per second at operating conditions a velocity of 4.5 meter seconds is a desired rate if not enough lift gas is available then more steam must be used to maintain at least the minimum riser velocity the raw oil is mixed with atomizing a steam at each of the optimates of feed distributor this mixture is then injected into the riser at the point a 7 meter 43 feet above the lift gas nozzles where it meets the hot recirculating catalyst the oil is immediately vaporized with the resulting pressure increase forcing the catalyst of vapor mixtures up to the riser to react vessels cracking reaction takes place in the two to three seconds required for the catalyst and hydrocarbon vapor to reach the top of the rises. Catalyst is quickly separated from the hydrocarbons by a vortex separation system. It's also known as a VSS in the reactive vessels to reduce overcracking. Four signal stage cyclones separate intent catalyst particles from the hydrocarbons vapors. Okay, the vapor exit the cyclones and flow to the main column for suppression. The recovered spent catalyst of flow down to cyclone or duplex to the reactor stepper section. Steam displaces any remaining hydrocarbon vapor from the catalyst in the reactor stepper. Catalyst of flow down over a perforated baffle plates and steam flows upward or through the perforations in a counter current arrangement. The steam flow is controlled at the rate of approximately 2.2 kg per ton of cutters circulation to achieve the refractory steam. From the steam for the spent cutters of flow out of the reactor into the spent cutters standby the catalyst flow to the combustor is regulated by the spent catalyst slide wall, which maintain the reactor's catalyst back level. The level controller regulating the slide wall opening, reactor catalyst back level is controlled just above the top of the stepper. This allows a minimum catalyst inventory while fully utilizing the steeper steam. Again, a pressure differential controller PDIC sends a signal to the LSS to close the well in case of low or negative pressure differential. This minimizes the possibility of air entering the reactor or during absence. Okay, now we are going to discuss FCC regenerator. The high efficiency regenerator is divided into two sections. Lower section is called the combustor where the spent, recirculated and cooled cutters are mixed with air and coke combustions occur. The combustor operates in the fast fluidized regime of fluidizations. All the cutters entering the combustor is transported up the combustor riser into the upper regenerator, where the regenerated cutters disengage from the flue gases and cutters return to the risers. The regenerated holds the cyclones, provides volume for regenerated cutters to disengage from the flue gas and provide the surge capacity for catalyst in the system. There is a no control instrumentation on the regenerated catalyst level. A level recorder 
is provided to monitor the regenerated catalyst level. The actual regenerated catalyst level changes with the catalyst addition, withdrawals and loss and from the system. An important feature of the high efficiency regenerator is the recirculation of catalyst standby and a slide bar. The recirculation of the hot regenerated catalyst up from the regenerator to the combustor is important in controlling the core combustion rate. By controlling the amount of catalyst recirculating, following the parameters are controlled in the combustors. Number one, pre-combustion mixing temperature, catalyst density, catalyst flow and catalyst residence time. This in turn allow the co-combustion rate and catalyst origination to be optimized. The recirculation catalyst slide wall is controlled through a Okay, next. The circulation slide wall position is controlled by temperature controller or a density controller which are selected. The regenerator pressure is indirectly controlled by operating the flue gas slide wall from the controller of which measure the differential pressure between the reactor and the regenerator. By using a PDIC Control or minimize the effect of frictionation, a suction of pressures, surge on the catalyst circulation. The reactor regenerator differential pressure is generally chosen to roughly equalize the differential pressure across the catalyst slide wall. In case the pressure in the regenerator becomes too high, the pressure controller of the regenerator sends a signal to a high signal selector switch to open the slide wall further. Okay, next we will discuss a catalyst storage. Okay, catalyst storage. To compensate a catalyst losses, to control a metal levels on the catalyst and to maintain activity of the catalyst inventory and hence the product range as constant as possible. A fresh catalyst has to be added to the system. The fresh catalyst is stored in a fresh catalyst storage hub and fed to the regenerator via a dosing system. At a high level in the regenerator, equilibrium catalyst has to withdraw. This equilibrium catalyst is stored in a high metal equilibrium catalyst storage hoppers. Used a catalyst with a low metal content can be stored in a hopper. The addition of a fresh or low metal catalyst from the hoppers to the regenerator is done via catalyst addition control. It consists of volume port, catalyst loading line, catalyst unloading line, and a transfer air line. All lines are equipped with on and off wells, a catalyst addition control CAC. Catalyst addition control operates on these on and off wells. The CAC catalyst addition control well is designed to control the addition rate of the catalyst to the regenerator. The desired addition rate in a kg per hour will be manually input to the CAC catalyst addition control as a set point. The CAC or catalyst addition control will then calculate the required number of batches per hour to provide the desired addition rate. Instrument air is used for catalyst conveyor from the hoppers to the regenerator. The catalyst storage hoppers can be evacuated by a steam jet ejector to facilitate the transport of the catalyst to the hop. The discharge line of is connected to the flue gases line upstream of the flue gas treatment system. Okay. Next is a catalyst. Okay. Abscess unit, catalyst cooling. The catalyst cooler 
provide a very important FCC operating flexibility, permitting a direct control over the regenerated catastrophic temperature. The regenerated catastrophic temperature is a major variable governing a cracking reaction since it both sets the catalyst to oil ratio and determines the temperature of the catalyst surface at its first contact with the oil field. A high catalyst reaction severity, high catalyst and oil ratio and catalyst activity is desirable for the conversion of heavy water material to the lighter product. The normal effect of the of decrease uh, in the feedstock quality is to increase the delta for a co catalyst weight ratio on spent catalyst which in turn increase the regenerated temperature and lowers the catalyst to oil ratio. At a high reaction severity there may be more coke generated high coke yield on a feed but this is offset by the high conversion of the feed to valuable product and improvement in the yield of the gasoline. Operating condition for the catalyst cooler and regenerator must be selected partly on the basis of the charge stop. The desired conversion and the catalyst to the oil ratios as determined from the heat balance around the reactors and regenerator. A regenerated catalyst at temperature which is too high tends to increase the yield of the light gas at the expense of gasoline and LPG. If the catalyst temperature is too low, unit may fall behind in burning since a proper combustion cannot be maintained in the regenerator. Thus, the ability to vary the regenerator a dense space Heat removal by the catalyst cooler is a very important in optimizing the reactor operation that is maximum cat, cat oil ratio or conversion while continuing to achieve a good regeneration. The heat removal can be varied by varying the opening of the slide walls with HIC or hand indicated control. Okay. If the pressure of the deflection across the slide wells are dropped to a very low value, the pressure differential controllers PDIC send a signal to the low signal selector switch to close the wells. Hot cutters from the regenerator dense a phase of flows through the cooler shelves around the water or tubes of the inserted or tubes bundles and out of the cooler or through the cold catalyst standpipes into the combustion. The fluidization air lens system deliver fluidization air to the cooler shells to maintain catalyst fluidization and mixing in the shell and ensure that the catalyst flows smoothly through the coolers and out or through the standpipe. The combination of the mixing and the net cutters flux or through the cooler provides the driving force for heat transfer by maintaining contact of the hot cutters with the tube while heat transfer is varied varying the mixture degree of aerations and net cutters flux of flowing or through the coolers. The cooler shell are equipped with ties and differential pressure instrumentations to allow the temperature and the density of the catalyst in the cooler to be monitored. To protect the tubes from the thermal damaging oxidizations, a large axis of water is circulated or through the tubes to ensure that the tube walls remain wet. The minimum circulating water to the steam weight ratios is 20.1. Water circulation is monitored by the flow control, a low signal from the low transportation to out of two 
activate the separation with circulating pump also started. Okay. A low low flow signal from the water circulation flow transmitter effectively if the flow is not established again within 30 seconds causes the cooler to shut down by closing the cooled catalyst slide valve and closing the fluidization air control valve. The mixture of steam and water exiting the cooler at the bundle flows to the steam drum where the steam and the water are separated. The saturated steam flow from the drum is omitted and flow to the superheating coils of the flue gas steam generator. The water returned to the steam drum is circulated back to the cooler tube bundles. A small continuously a blow down of the water is removed from the drum to control accumulation of impurities in the circulating water. The output of the steam drum flow meters and the steam drum level control are summed and control the flow of boiled field water a makeup entering the steam drum. The steam drum is equipped with a three level switches on the event of very low liquid in the steam drum being controlled. Okay. Fluidization air for the cooler is provided from the flopping air compressors. The fluidization air is controlled by flow control valves. The control valve signal is routed through a solenoid valve which trip to control the air control valves upon receipt of a short run signal from either the circulating water flow transmitter or the low low level switches at the state. Conclusion today we discussed FCC unit introductions, FCC unit reactor, FCC regenerator, catalyst storage, and catalyst cooling. Next topic we are going to discuss of flue gases heat recovery, main column and main column bottoms, LCO pump around circuit, and LCO pump around and product circuit. Okay, these are a few references here. Okay, please do not hesitate to send me your feedback, commerce.info.dr.cos.it. Please stay safe, inspired, and blessed. Thank you very much. Have a good day.